Welcome to our fifth Sunday of social distancing at Old North United Methodist Church. You are invited to join us now as we worship together. Even though we are apart, we are bound together as brothers and sisters in Christ. Let us worship. Let us pray. O oh God, in your holy sanctuary, we seek your presence. We come broken and hurting. Touch us with your healing hand. We come scared and anxious. Soothe us with your peaceful presence. We come uncertain and discouraged. Renew us with your gentle spirit. We come excited and joyful. Dance with us, laugh with us, cry with us, be with us. In love, we come to you today and every day, for we are your children. And you are our God. In the name of Jesus, amen. Sounds of heaven and earth should ring. Christ has brought us heaven's choices. Heavenly music, let it ring. Alleluia, alleluia. Easter people, let us sing. Fear of death can no more stop us. From our pressing here below, for our Lord empowered us to triumph over every fall. Alleluia, alleluia, on to victory now we go. Every day to us is Easter with his resurrection song. When in trouble, move the faster to our God who rights the wrong. Alleluia, alleluia, see the power of heavenly throne.
Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Wow, look at that. I just love this time of the day. I can hear the birds chirping. I love the colors in the sky. Brings me so much joy. I wish I could share this with my church friends right now. They love it. Hmm. Hello friends, how are you? I miss you so much. I am really looking forward to the day when we can all hang out together again. So, I have a lot of time on my hands. I don't know if you do. You do too? Yeah, I've been home a lot lately. So, I was looking for ways to, you know, have kind of a fun morning. So I decided to get up this morning and I drove down to church and I noticed that the sun was coming up and it was so beautiful coming up right beside the church. And I was listening to the birds and I was watching that color in the sky and I was thinking, wow, this is really cool. I would love to share this with someone. It's kind of like an indescribable joy. It's hard to describe. Maybe you've been around someone when they're talking about something and they say, you just had to be there. I kind of get that because that indescribable joy is really kind of a neat thing that you get to have in life. And I hope that all of you get to experience it. Sometimes sunrises do that for me. Sometimes it's sunsets. One time I got to see a baby bird hatch from uh, an egg and it was so indescribable. It was such a joy to be able to see that. I remember another time I had that kind of joy. When I was 11 years old, I got to go to a church camp and I got to spend time with lots of people who were joyful and I got to sing lots of joyful songs and I got to do new things and have new experiences. And that was a time of joy for me that was really, really wonderful. So that got me thinking about joy and I've been reading my Bible this week, and I know that if we trust in God, that he will help us to see things in a different way, and sometimes those different ways can bring joy. I know it's been kind of hard lately, being in the house a lot and having to find different things to do, but I really think right now we're supposed to be learning some lessons, maybe a new way of looking for joy. I've seen a lot of neighbors, um, Visiting maybe in a different way, like waving or having parades and sharing um, sweet comments to each other, maybe with a wave or a yell across the street. Um, we had some neighbors this week that baked cookies for other neighbors. And then um, that neighbor who got the cookies decided to make a beautiful art project and send it back to the neighbor. So I'm thinking, wow, that's really spreading a lot of joy in a time where it's kind of hard to find the joy. I thought that was pretty amazing. So I think if we have confidence that God will show us the new way and show us how to have joy, that we can have it. And maybe we need to find it in a different way than we're used to. I think he wants us to stick with our goals. I know that he wants us to continue to do a good job on our virtual schoolwork. And I know that he wants us to continue to worship him. And we can do that by going to, to um, church on Sunday, at least on the computer. And then one day we'll get to see each other again and do it in person. And what a joy that will be. And I think we have to also have some courage through this time because God has promised us that things are going to be okay. That sometimes we have to go through some rough patches or some rough times so that we can learn to do things in a different way. And maybe we'll find some joy as we go. So... Anyway, I just wanted to share with you that it's going to be okay, and we will see each other again soon, and I hope that you're doing all right. Have a great day. Bye. Sweetheart.
hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, that calls me from a world of care and bids me at my Father's throne make all my wants and wishes known. In seasons of distress and grief, my soul has often found relief, and oft escaped the tempter's snare by thy return, sweet hour of prayer. I invite you now to lift those you carry on your hearts, those you are aware of that are being impacted by our current situation. And the church in this time of need as well, that we may be the church to all people everywhere. Loving God, we thank you for creating each one of us uniquely in your image. We are so grateful that because we are your children, because you created us and breathed into us the breath of life, there is also a place for each one of us at your table. Sometimes, God, we don't feel worthy. We think we have to earn your love. We believe we are too damaged to receive your mercy. Restore us in your loving spirit that we may know beyond any doubt that your love extends to each one of us, no exceptions. Sometimes we fool ourselves into believing we are better than someone else. We think that our intelligence, our compassion, our skills, our wit elevate us to a higher level of existence and goodness than others around us. Humble us, God, and remind us that we are all equal in the ways that matter. Your way of love and grace and acceptance. Move in us and around us today and help us to meet you in our neighbor, to see your spirit on the face of each person we meet, to remember that you are in all things, everywhere, from the most ordinary moment to the most extraordinary moment. Transform us by your love that we may live out your love in our daily lives. May our profession of faith be in both words and action. Hear us through Jesus as we lift his prayer, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Faith while trees are 
are still in blossom, plants are picking of the fruit. Faith can feel the thrill of harvest when the buds began to sprout. Long before the dawn is breaking, faith anticipates the sun. Faith is eager for the daylight, for the work that must be done. Long before the rains were coming, Noah went and built an ark. Abraham, the lowly migrant, saw the light before the dark. Faith uplifted, tamed the water of the undivided sea, and the people of the Hebrews found the path that made them free. Faith believes that God is faithful, God will be what God will be. Faith accepts the call responding, I am willing, Lord, send me. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 16, and we will be reading this responsively. We ask that you read aloud the bold print. We also ask that you sing the sung response, which will be the full verse and chorus of Rescue the Perishing, verses 1, 3, and 4. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying, snatch them in pity from sin and the grave. We pour the erring one, lift up the fallen, tell them of Jesus the mighty to save. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying, Jesus is merciful, Jesus will save. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. Even at night, my heart instructs me. Down in the human heart, crushed by the tempter, Feelings lie buried that grace can restore. Touched by a loving heart, wakened by kindness, chords that were broken will vibrate once more. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful, Jesus will save. Therefore, my heart is glad, and my soul rejoices. My body also dwells secure. You show me the path of life. Rescue 
the perishing duty demands it. Strength for thy labor the Lord will provide. Back to the narrow way, patiently wend them. Tell the poor wanderer a Savior has died. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful, Jesus will save. Let us pause in life's pleasures and count its many tears why we all sub sorrow with the poor there's a song that will linger forever in our ears oh hard times come again no more Tis the song, the sigh of the weary. Hard times, hard times come again no more. Many days you have lingered around my cabin door. Oh, hard times come again no more while we seek mirth and beauty and music light and gay there are frail forms fainting at the door though their voices are silent their pleading looks will say, Oh, hard times come again no more. Tis the song, the sigh of the weary. Hard times, hard times come again no more. Many days you have lingered around my cabin door. Oh, hard times come again no more. There's a pale drooping maiden who toils her life away with a worn heart whose better days are o'er. Though her voice would be merry, tis sighing all the day, all oh, hard times come again no more. Tis the song, the sigh of the wind, Tis a sigh that is wafted across the troubled wave. Tis the wail that is heard upon the shore. Tis the dirt that is murmured around the lowly grave. Oh, hard times come again no more. Tis the song, the sigh of the weary. Hard times, hard times come again no more. Many days you have lingered 
around my cabin door. Oh, hard times come again no more. Many days you have lingered around my cabin door. Oh, hard times come again no more. Oh, hard times come again no more. The Hope of Eternal Life All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by his great mercy that we have been born again, because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we live with great expectation, and we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of any change and decay. And through your faith, God is protecting you by his power until you receive his salvation, which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. So be truly glad. There is wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. These trials will show you that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. You love him even though you have never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him and you rejoice with glorious, inexpressible joy. The reward for trusting him will be the salvation of your souls. The words you heard from 1 Peter this morning were encouraging words, written to people who had a reason to be discouraged. Paul was writing to Christians who were being prosecuted and persecuted for their faith, both. He calls them foreigners or exiles. An exile is a person living away from his or her homeland. An exile is separated from that which she loves. An exile might live in a pleasant country, but her heart is always longing for home. Often an exile cannot return home for legal or political reasons. Peter tells these Christians that they are exiles. He tells us that we are exiles. We are citizens of heaven forced by circumstances to live in another world for the time being. I'm reminded of the old gospel song. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Peter says that we are citizens of the heavenly kingdom by virtue of our new birth. When we become Christians, God sends the Holy Spirit to dwell in us, making us new people. Peter describes that as a new birth to a living hope. Other New Testament passages describe this as an adoption. When we become Christian, God adopts us and we become his. Because God has adopted us, he becomes our father and we become his children, entitled to all the privileges of a prince or a princess. Our home becomes a palace and we become privileged children. Unlike most people, we have free access to the king. We can talk to him whenever we want. He loves us and provides for us. Furthermore, Peter tells us that we have an incorruptible and undefiled
undefiled inheritance that does not fade away, reserved for us in heaven. Have you ever considered how wonderful it would be to receive an inheritance? Well, I have. Now, my parents had very little money. I never expected to inherit anything from them. But when I was a child, my grandparents used to talk about leaving their farm to my mother, my sister, and I. They didn't have much either, really. It was a small home on a little plot of land in a small Indiana town at the time, and a few thousand dollars in the bank if they were lucky. But they, in their love, wanted us to benefit from their hard work and frugality. They would take me aside every once in a while and assure me that they had made a will, whatever that was, that left everything to my mother, my sister, and myself. They had two sons. They weren't leaving them anything. They had other grandchildren. They weren't leaving them anything. They held my mother, my sister, and myself very close, and they wanted us to know that we would receive an inheritance upon their death. Now, I love my grandparents. I didn't want them to die. Still, it was good to know. It was good to know that they wanted to express their love in that way. And the little that they had accumulated was enough to make a big difference in my life. I was grateful to my grandparents and I was glad to know that someday their generosity would lift me out of poverty. It didn't work out that way. My grandfather died. And years later, 10 years later actually, having spent seven of those 10 years living with my mother and I and my sister, my grandmother was moved into a nursing home where she spent the last three years of her life. By the time she died, the farm had been spent to pay for her care. I had no inheritance. Now I had long since become reconciled to the fact that I would have no inheritance. I managed without it, but I was saddened that my grandparents had been unable to carry through with their dream. I did receive an inheritance of sorts from my grandfather. I inherited a whole lot of his gene pool. I'm tall like him, kind of look like him, have something of his personality. I'll let you all decide whether or not that's a blessing. A small inheritance it is. But Peter comes along, reassuring me that all this is just temporary. It's just temporary. I am a child of God. And God has provided me with an inheritance and ensures it, an inheritance, an incorruptible and undefiled inheritance that doesn't fade away, reserved in heaven for me. And he further reassures me, even though I have had to endure various trials and tribulations, God has allowed those only to prove the genuineness of my faith just as the first fires prove and refine gold to the highest purity. When I read this scripture, I was reminded of a story told by Fred Craddock, a great preacher, when he delivered the Lehman Beecher lectures at Yale. Craddock said that he and his wife had been on vacation in the Smoky Mountains of Eastern Tennessee. They'd gone to a restaurant called the Black Bear Inn. It was beautiful. One side of the building was glass and it overlooked the Smokies. Craddock and his wife were just beginning to look at the menu when an old man with a shock of white hair came to the table. He said, good evening. Craddock replied, good evening. He said, enjoying yourself? Yes. Where are you from? By this time, Craddock was wishing the man would just go away and let him appreciate the view that he so seldom got to see. But he replied, Oklahoma. What do you do in Oklahoma? Craddock said, well, I teach in a seminary. Oh, you teach preachers. I can tell you 
right now, like the last thing Craddock wanted to hear in the whole world was another preacher story. And trust me, we've heard them already. But the old man started in anyway. He said, you know, I was born back here in these mountains. My mother was not married. And the repro reproach that fell upon her fell upon me. The children at the school had a name for me and it hurt, it hurt a lot. During recess, I would go hide in the weeds until the bell rang. At lunchtime, I took my lunch and I went behind a tree to avoid them. If I went to town, and I seldom went, it was with my mother. The men and the women would stare at her, and then they'd stare at me, and I knew they were trying to guess who I was. It was a painful time. About the seventh or eighth grade, I started to go hear a preacher. Now, he scared me. He scared me in a way, and he attracted me in another way. He wore a claw hammer tail coat, striped trousers, and had a face that looked like it had been quarried out of a granite stone mountain. He thundered. I was afraid people would say what they always said. What's a boy like you doing here? So I just went in time for the sermon, and then I'd slip right out when it was over. Well, one Sunday, I got stuck. I got caught behind a woman and all of her kin, and I couldn't get out. And I began to sweat and get cold, sweaty and cold, and I wondered, oh my gosh, is somebody going to ask me? Is somebody gonna say, what's a boy like you doing in a church? And I felt a hand on my shoulder about that time, and out of the corner of my eye, I saw, that beard, and I saw that face. Oh, God, it was the preacher. And he stared at me, and he looked at me, and he stared at me, and I thought, oh, no, not him, too. He's going to ask me. He's going to guess. He said, well, boy, you're a child of, uh, you're you're." You're a child of, uh, hmm, wait a minute now. I got it. I got it. You're a child of God. I see the striking resemblance. And he swatted me on my bottom and said, go claim your inheritance, boy. Craddock looked at the old man and said, what's your name? He said, Ben Hopper. Get out your telephones and Google Ben Hopper. Go ahead. Craddock remembered, though. He didn't Google. He remembered. His father had told him about the time the people of Tennessee had elected an illegitimate governor named Ben Hopper. 1911 to 1915. Two terms as governor. Illegitimate. Shoot. We're all illegitimate in some sense. Paul tells us that we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all have reason to worry about someone discovering the truth about us. And that's not the end of the story. Peter says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy became our Father again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an incorruptible, undefiled inheritance that doesn't fade away, reserved in heaven for us. By the mercy of God, we are his children. Let's go claim our inheritance. Amen. Sweetness fills the breast. Bow 
but sweeter far thy face to see, and in thy presence rest. O hope of every contrite heart, O joy of all the meek, to those who fall, how kind thou art, how good to those who seek. But what to those who find are this, nor tongue nor pen can show the love of Jesus what it is none but his loved ones know Jesus our only joy be thou as thou our prize wilt be Jesus be thou our glory now and through eternity. Together this morning we have encountered God. We have heard the gospel. We now go forth as witnesses. Celebrate the good news. Live the good news. It's always the hardest thing to do, live the good news. There it is. Share the good news. Amen. And amen.